Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's presentation. Uh, we're doing our partner lunch and learn on our predictions, strategies, and our product roadmap for 2019. So thanks for joining us. To start, you know, we'd love to know um, if any of you have ever joined one of our webinars before. So if you want to just shoot a quick uh, message in the uh, chat modal, that would be great. And I'll, maybe I'll report on it in a minute if, to give you guys some time to, to put comments in there. But we're happy to have you either way, whether you're new or you've been on there before. So um, I assume most of you are, oh, and we have, we have a couple of yeses. So welcome back. Glad to have you guys on another webinar with us. Um, so I assume most of you are familiar with Annex Cloud, but just quickly for those of you who aren't, we are a fully integrated customer marketing platform for loyalty, referrals, and user-generated content. We've been around since 2011 and have over 300 enterprise customers worldwide, supported by 150 employees. And if you want to learn more, you can check us out on our website at amixcloud.com or you know, reach out to us after the presentation. And now on to who I am. So I, I'm Carly Horn, and I'm the Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships and Business Development here at Annex Cloud. And you know what that means, because sometimes partnerships is a little bit of a confusing role, but I get to develop and nurture relationships with great partners like you guys um, in hopes of providing the best experience possible for our customers while helping each other grow our businesses. I'm new to Annex Cloud. I joined about two months ago now, and I was previously the VP of Partnerships at Loyalty Lion. And before that, I was the Director of Partnerships at Emma, which is now Campaign Monitor. And while the company, while Annex Cloud is based in the LA area, I'm actually from Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, so I work remotely from here most of the time when I'm not on the road. Um, and if you haven't been to Nashville yet, most likely you maybe have been for a bachelor bachelorette party, but I would definitely make a trip. Um, and then I'm joined today by my colleague and our VP of Marketing and Growth at Annex Cloud, Chris Bechtel. And Chris, I'm going to let you go ahead and, and introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about you. Thanks, Carly, and uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. We're uh, you know excited to kind of give you guys some some value here, as well as uh, talk to you a little bit about where Annex Cloud is headed in 2019. Um, but yeah, my role, of course, is to um, drive growth in the company and across you know um, partnerships being a critical growth channel. So my role is really to help you know make sure that the partner team has the right content and the right collateral, the right assets, the right tools, and of course, all of you who are listening understand you know, what the value is that Annex Cloud can bring and, and also support a whole bunch of great partner collaborations that we do. So um, partnerships in terms of events, content, other co-marketing activities. So we are, you know, our, our charge here is to really drive excellence in those areas. So look forward to you know, continuing to work with everybody and um, hopefully you will see us more and more um, and if you do have certainly partner co-marketing activities, we'd love to hear about them from you. Um, it also provides some real thought leadership and some great content. So that's what we hope to do today. Yeah, yeah. And so next up is our little agenda, and Carly will walk us through that for a second. Yeah, so we're going to start by having Chris walk you through the strategies for 2019 um, and some key loyalty features we've identified. We will touch on AI-powered loyalty as well. And then um, I'm going to share a few exciting highlights from our product roadmap for 2019, uh, discuss you know, when and why to talk to customers about Annex Cloud, and then we'll um, finish up with some Q&A. So before we dive in, just quickly touch on a little bit of housekeeping. We will be sending out a recording of today's presentation after this. So if you need to hop off the phone for any reason, um, or you just want to share the presentation with a colleague or a friend because it's just that good, then we've got you covered. Um, we will be taking questions, so please type them directly into the chat modal throughout the discussion, and we'll get to them at the end. And also, you are muted for the duration of today's um, presentation, so we don't hear your dog barking or your colleague on this one in the background. So just make sure to type your questions, because um, otherwise we won't hear them. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Chris now to get us started. Thanks, Carly. So. You know, again, where we kind of see, you know, 2019 in, in marketing and, and I think, you know, where what I've seen really is is the idea that, you know, we fall in love sort of with technology and technology is everywhere. We're all in the technology space. But at the end of the day, you know, our customers, customers, you know, need to really have an emotional connection, um, you know, with that brand. Right. And obviously, 
um, as the data shows, it's, it's brands with four or more elements of these value. This is a, a, a chart taken from Bain. Um, and Bain has really identified 30 elements that consumers value the most. And brands that have the most elements of value have a higher NPS, net promoter score, and drive you know, ultimately higher revenue. So consumers value, you know, very closely, these sort of reflect sort of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So the higher up the pyramid, the greater the value and the greater long-term, you know, relationship, which ultimately leads to greater value. Of course, retention contributes to value tremendously. Um, and, you know, what we see is like these barriers to e-commerce have dropped, right? Technology um, reduces um you know, it makes makes getting to market a lot easier. So therefore, the barrier to entry is a lot lower. So therefore, as we've all seen, the proliferation of new direct to consumer brands. You know, so the larger brands are you know now really trying to compete. You know, for market share against many many smaller players. Um, you know, there's there's fewer and fewer differentiators across brands. Um, so. What I think is important to kind of realize here is sort of where we are today um, in the market and what what kind of uh, challenges our customers, customers, um, you know, and what our customers are dealing with in terms of trying to differentiate among all of the brands in which they're competing with. Um, so I think this is super interesting and you can get this uh, by visiting this at uh, Bain if you haven't seen this before. But kind of where we're headed in 2019 and sort of as a as a a core focus for Annex Cloud is really trying to develop deeper emotional connections um, and helping our customers de develop deeper emotional connections with their customers. And so emotional elements, you know, if you bring these together, um, those brands that are, you know, using more of these um, emotional elements have a deeper connection. So according to the research, you know, it, companies are using emotional messaging, whereas incumbents tend to lean on focusing on function. Um, so the leaders are really focused on emotional value and emotional messaging as opposed to functional value. Um, and this research is really based on insights from psychology. It's probably unlikely this is going to shift, you know, especially um, going forward. It'll only increase in 2019. And we're seeing more and more companies move towards emotional value because of this competition. You know, with so many brands out there, really relying on functional values is, is not really sustainable because it's a lot easier uh, for someone to compete against one against a functional value as opposed to an emotional value, right? Now, you know, how is this truly relevant to kind of, I think, you know, what we're talking about at Annex Cloud is that a loyalty program can tackle really five of these core values um, that go beyond just functional. Um, and a, a loyalty program, you know, can can incentivize and which then is creates motivation, right? Um, a loyalty program has the ability to, you know, with affiliation and badging. So there's there's a gamification component, right? Um, rewards, of course, are a key component of a loyalty program. Right, um, a loyalty program can help bridge that value, right? Um, or actually provide badged value so that people feel like they get to one tier. You know, there's there's a competitive nature um, in most people psychologically, right? We all have this desire to get to the next level, um, and then there's a sort of a, this idea of of affiliation and belonging, right? We want to feel like we're a part of a, a community. Um, we want to feel a part of an identity, and in many cases, the more we, we can identify ourselves with a particular brand, um, again, the more, more we're going to be, you know, tend to be engaged. Um, and so all of these things, and then, of course, you know, fun and entertainment, um, all of these things, you know, are emotional values that, that can be supported by a loyalty program. And what we see at Annex Cloud is the ability to really incentivize and reward. So really, we have a platform that allows our customers to really truly understand, okay, what are the actions that we want our customers to take? And how do we design a program that incentivizes those actions and ties into these types of um, elements of value? Um, and so as we move forward in 2019, we really think that, you know, a continued focus um, that our customers can take on being able to capitalize on this reality in the marketplace of consumer behavior, the more successful 
they're going to be, right? Um, so as we continue to support this, you know, we see that, uh, again, companies that have four or more elements of value are going to see 13% growth in revenue compared to just 3%. This is what the data shows, right? And so ultimately, the more that, that our, you know, our customers have the ability to truly understand what value they want to you know, provide to their customers, and the more that value can be emotional-based rather than functional-based, that, of course, is going to ultimately drive uh, impact in the core KPIs, such as uh, purchase frequency, um, average order value, uh, conversion rates, and ultimately that leads to growth in revenue. So these are a couple of just a couple of highlights here of some sort of key loyalty features that I think uh, support this in particular. Of course, you know one of the real values of Annex Cloud is the real depth and breadth of the platform across not just loyalty but as well as um, referral marketing, which is refer a friend, influencer management, as well as user generated content, um, you know, ratings and reviews, uh, questions and answers, visual commerce. Um, but all of these things can be provided by Annex Cloud and tied together. But in particular to loyalty, the key features that at least I wanted to highlight that can help a brand, a manufacturer um, support um, these elements of value is the ability to have like real reward flexibility. And it seems like a given at this point. Like, I mean, but it's that not everyone can do it. In many cases, many loyalty platforms are still just giving points for purchase. But in Annex Cloud, we can actually help a brand really truly design the type of reward. So it can be a really, you know, an experiential reward. Um, in this case, this is a screenshot of Sugar Fina, um, who um, enables, and you can see here, it's a little bit difficult. I encourage everyone to go um, to the Sugar Fina website, register, um, and sign up for their loyalty program. And in fact, we can give you a coupon code um, through Sugarfina, which will allow you to get a free reward sent to you. Um, so hit us up via um, email. You can uh, hit us up um, actually through the comments. We'll probably share this through our you know, follow-up email. We can give you all a coupon code so that you can go and sign up for um, Sugarfina's loyalty program and get a reward redemption. Um, but the point is here is that we can have real reward flexibility that is really in line with the brand. So not just points for purchase, but I, at the top tier in Sugarfina's case, you get an in-store shopping experience. Um, one of the things that they give you is a free um, sample. And so that's what, what we'll give you as a coupon. We'll, we'll be able to send you a free sample of their amazing candy. Um, you also get, of course, complete creative control. So one of the things is that, you know, we don't just have a templated, system where you know one sort of generic element is applied to all of our customers you you know our, our customers get complete creative control so that the loyalty program is real true extension of the brand so that that loyalty program really does extend to continuing to promote that element of value um, and finally sort of a truly omni-channel capability so we have all of these like deep integrations across all of our partners um, from point of sale to e-com platform to e leading esps um, so that in Sugarfina's case, for example, the experience across web, mobile, and in-store is seamless. That's the true omni-channel experience. So someone can purchase um, and boost their loyalty points for online purchases, but actually then when they go into the store, they could actually decide, oh, I want to redeem my reward right here in in-store and get a barcode sent to them to their phone via SMS or otherwise, and they can redeem right there, then and there um, when they want it. Um, so those are just a couple of key features that I think are really important as we continue to support this trend towards um, really delivering emotional connections with our customer by really trying to um, empower our brands to, to use that elements of value that really drive um, true customer connection as opposed to just functional value. And now I think Carly's going to talk just a little bit about what we're doing in terms of AI and where that's headed. Carly? she might be muted. <laughs> Sorry, I was there on, on mute. Um, yeah, and I just to piggyback on what Chris was saying um, on the loyalty features too, I think 
it's important to think too beyond discounting, right? Of course, we talk about that a lot too, that a lot of our customers, you think of a loyalty program and you think of providing a discount, right, to your loyalty members and brands like Sugarfina and others that are working with us are getting really creative around what those um, reward redemptions can look like, right? A gift card or like in Sugarfina's case, a sample or a free product or something like that. I think there's a lot of value there um, beyond just giving, you know, a, a percentage discount or something off of an order when you when you think of your loyalty members. And yeah, then... And Sorry, sorry to interrupt. And I think that that's a great point. You're right that I neglected to bring up. And obviously, it's like the, the discounting is is a big, big challenge that every you know brand or retailer faces, right? And so, obviously, I think one of the examples is um, that we're going to show is Jenny Kane, which actually they don't discount products at all, and you know all of their sales are based on value, right? Um, so I think that's you know critical. Um, the ability to get brands to, to get away from discounting because discounting is really just an incentive to get people to buy, right? So ultimately, if you can provide other incentives, um, that's what um, is critical to, to success and getting away from discounting or at least reducing the need for discounting. Um, and I guess, you know, sort of that dovetails into this AI powered loyalty, right? Um, and Carly, like, I think that you've probably seen this as I have, the, you know, the ability to use AI, I think is where, where, what we're talking about at Annex Cloud to really, you know, get deeper into segmentation. That's really what AI has that power to like be able to find trends in the data, correct? Yes, um, yeah. And, and so that's kind of what we're really looking for in, in the AI side of things. And that's where we see things going. What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, learning as much as we can learn about consumer behavior, right, to understand better when to approach them, you know, to send the right message at the right time to the right person, especially when it comes to, you know, loyalty. And you think about that a lot with sort of what your marketing campaign looks like, like when you're sending an email message, right, when do you want to be sending that and how do you really make that something that's going to be valuable to the, the consumer? Um, and I think, you know, we're doing some really interesting stuff like our receipt data aggregator, um, is a really interesting feature that we just wrote out. And Chris, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit because I think it's it's new and it's exciting and it's something that I think ha helps us stand apart a little bit, right? Yeah, so and I think that this is other one of the other key components of Annex Cloud and the ability that we can configure a loyalty solution for a variety of different industries, verticals, and use cases, right? Because no one size fits all. You know, that's again, I think, a critical component of what we do here. And the receipt data aggregator solution is essentially for brands that don't sell direct to consumers. So they might sell, for example, a cosmetic company that sells through Sephora or Ulta or something else does not have the same thing. We have some consumer electronics companies where they sell through Best Buy or um, another retailer, so they don't have a direct connection to their end customer. So what the receipt data aggregator solution allows um, a brand to do is allow their customers who make a purchase to submit, to, to basically take a picture of their receipt. We have an OCR technology that scans the receipt and then serves all the data back to the brand or manufacturer so that now instead of just having a customer buy at Best Buy or buy a cosmetic product at Sephora, I now know as the brand or manufacturer, I know who that customer is, I know what they purchased, I know where they purchased it, I know when they purchased it, and now I have it. So not only do I have data, super valuable data, that again, AI can then you know, um, be able to analyze that data for trends, opportunities, um, segmentation, but also now I have the ability to have a direct relationship with that customer, with the one that I did not have before. Um, and, and now we can then, of course, automatically add that customer into a loyalty program or at least, you know, empower the brand to now be able to interact with that customer and incentivize them um, to continue to buy. Right. And now perhaps buy um, through an alternate channel, if that's what I so choose. You know, some some brands and manufacturers not only sell wholesale, but they also have their own direct to consumer channel. Um, or maybe they want to drive customers to, you know, be aware of new products and other things and drive them back to the retail channel. Um, the point being is that where we see things going, there's a proliferation of data, but still brands and manufacturers don't have the ability to actually fully analyze and get insights from that data and, and take actions easily. Um, and they still don't have, you know, the, the direct relationship with their customers in many cases that they really would like to have, 
right? So that's really, I think, the key highlight here. Yeah, it's really powerful. So yeah, we wanted to share um, a few exciting updates with you from our product roadmap and some of the stuff that we're working on right now on the dev side. Um, so one thing that, that's exciting that we're launching is um, an SMS integration that allows brands to text loyalty and referral notifications directly to a customer. So we're doing this by integrating with Twilio. Um, it just, you know, it allows for a more seamless in-store experience, uh, you know, when a customer is in the store and wants to redeem their reward. Obviously, people have their phones in their hand and the ability to text um, is huge there. So that's something that we're really excited about. Um, and we have a, a, a customer that's going to be using it here very soon, and then we'll be releasing it more widely um, down the road. And then we're also working um, on the ability to allow customers to create barcodes that are used in mobile. So we can handle the creation and UTC standard means they work with all scanning devices. Um, these are used for loyalty and referral redemptions and increase, you know, it increases the redemption rates and participation because it's just easier again for customers to redeem in store. So we want to make the, we want to make the, the process for the, for the end user, right? The cust our customer's customer as easy as possible. Um, and that's what some of those updates are around. And then integrations, you know, are a huge focus for us and, and will continue to be, a focus for us in 2019. You can see some exciting logos here, um, including you know Springboard POS, IBM Marketing Cloud, Zendesk, Recharge, SendGrid. You know we're really excited about um, some of the integrations that we're working on right now. Um, you know, and and the, we're growing that team actually, which is great. I think this list will only continue to grow, and we'll be spending a lot of time. Um, listening to our customers and talking to our partners to figure out how we can you know, update our current integrations to make them even more valuable in addition to just expanding the list that we already have. I feel like I just said the word integration a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. um, and so another thing that we thought would be good to cover um, for partners was just sort of when, when to talk to customers about Annex Cloud and why you should. So I think if you're... You know, and Chris, definitely feel free to chime in here. But um, if you're working with a client who has an established marketing strategy, you know, but you're hearing things like they're looking for ways to scale acquisition, conversion, retention, we think that's a really good time to talk, to bring up Amex Cloud, right? And talk to them about their loyalty strategy, if they have one, um, if they're doing anything for referral marketing, what, what they're doing around user-generated content, ratings and reviews, Q&A. Um, we can arm you with the right questions to ask to really understand in that process when Annex Cloud might be a good fit to introduce. But I think this is definitely a good place to start. Um, you know, and when a when a customer when a client's really looking to be able to customize a program to fit their needs and they want dedicated support and hands-on help getting set up and running, Annex Cloud's definitely a really good fit. Um, we have a great team behind the scenes that's helping our customers get up and running and you know ensure that that the that the program looks and feels like the brand. Um, I think we're, we're really strong there. And our platform is really designed to grow with customers no matter where they are. So we offer you know, a price competitive solution for fast growth brands that's going to scale as the client grows. And this is great because we all know it's a pain for everyone to have to switch platforms. So we've really designed the program so that customers won't feel like they have to um, as they continue to scale and grow, which, which we're going to help them do, right? That's our, that's our goal. Um, and, you know, for partners like you, as our clients grow and have success with us, they need more support, you know, hopefully from you as well. And more support equals more revenue. So um, that's really a win-win. Chris, anything to add there? Yeah, I mean, and to, just to add to that, I think that, again, one of the key values of Annex Cloud, right, is that because we have such a rich feature set, and, you know, we really look to be solution oriented, right? So we're not just sort of a cookie cutter, you know, templated, you know, a very, um, you know, fixed platform. You know, we have the ability to really, um, you know, bring the enterprise class um, solution, but make it um, a good place to start for those that are not yet at that level in terms of revenue and scale. So they can start with us. Um, but still get a really powerful, you know, feature set that actually is really solution oriented. So like, as Carly said at the beginning, you know, again, we find most of the customers that, you know, um, we are with, um, you know, I have, you know, they have something going, but they're really looking to really optimize. So they're really looking to, to, you know, improve their acquisition. They're really looking to improve retention. They're looking to improve conversion. 
Um, and so, you know, we have the ability to help them to do that by really configuring a solution that with the right set of incentives and the right set of features, and of course, with the right integration partners to really deliver on their core business goals. Um, so they can, you know, not only get, you know, real business value initially, but continue to do so, you know, year after year and, you know, and can continue to expand if they need to. Um, by uh, you know adding another feature, or if they decide suddenly that yeah they're going to start um, you know expanding um, their own channels, they can certainly expand you know using Annex Cloud. Now, one of the other things is that we also are continually asking um, customers: Are they satisfied with what the, where they're currently at? So we're doing the best we can continuously to identify opportunities for our partners. In many cases, right? Um, how how satisfied are you with your current ESP? How satisfied are you with your current agency partner? Um, we have a great collection of partners, um, and so we're going to have a continued focus on trying to identify opportunities for our partners as well, of course, um, because that you know creates the ultimate win-win that we're all looking for, right? Yeah, and I think that segues well into our competitive advantages. Chris, maybe you want to start on this, and then I can kind of chime in too. Yeah, and so I think that one of the things is we've seen in the market, you know, some of our partners, there's a little bit of consolidation here and there, but, you know, we are really the only true unified platform that has been doing this for a while now where we bring loyalty, user-generated content, being ratings and reviews, visual commerce, um, questions and answers, and referral marketing, refer a friend, um, influencer management, all into one platform. Now, again, people can start with one. So it really depends on where they are, again, what their current business goal is, what's the core KPI that they're really trying to make an impact around. So they can really start with one and expand into another, um, or they can, in many cases, will configure a solution that combines loyalty with referral marketing or um, you know, ratings and reviews along with loyalty. Um, because again, one of the big values is, is that through the way our loyalty solution is built, we can track all of the touch points and all of the actions that customers take and reward and incentivize the actions we want them to take. So therefore, we can make the user-generated content um, features even more effective. We can incentivize our customers' customers to actually submit a review um, or refer a friend or share something in social or upload an image, all of those things that can really truly provide value. And then the next big thing is, is really about you know, that we, we come from this enterprise space, but we're really, you know, making that affordable for, um, you know, everyone, but we're really, you know, not only just providing support, our team, our, our customer success team really provides, you know, strategic value, right? By continuously, you get a dedicated customer service, uh, a customer success a manager that really not only is just providing basic support, but also, providing strategy recommendations and continuously helping the customer get the most out of um, the program that they've implemented um, from, you know, even designing what are the right set of rewards, when should you promote that program? Because uh, it's not just, you know, something to get a customer going, and, but it's also, we you know, we um, have very high retention um, within our customer base because we um, really truly help our customers be successful. Yeah, and I think being still relatively new to Annex Cloud, like I mentioned, this is something I've been really impressed by. Um, the team is incredibly solid and they build really powerful and lasting relationships with our customers and really work with them, you know, to, to help with that strategy. And, th and they're great assets for our partners too, I think, you know, as, as we're onboarding clients together and working together, that team is, is really a, go a good place for, for partners um, to be kind of connecting with Annex Cloud and, and working together. So. It's really great. So then, yeah, I mean, Chris, I don't want to talk a little bit about some of our wins, but just a, a smattering of uh, logos of some clients that we've brought on, um, you know, recently. Yeah, and I think that what's important here is like, you know, we you can see that there's brands of varying types um, from pharmaceutical to, of course, um, apparel, um, you know, Sertera well, Wellness is in the cannabis space, um, Yumble's in food. Um, so I think that, you know, to my earlier point that it's not just a one size fits all. Um, it's, you know, the right solution 
for the right type of uh, industry vertical and business model. Um, yeah. You know, everybody has customers and everybody needs to retain those customers. Everyone needs to create better conversions of the customers they have. Everyone needs more customers. And so Anacod can really, truly help um, companies of all shapes and sizes. Yeah. And I think especially when you think about loyalty and referrals specifically, you think a lot about, you know, cosmetics and beauty and fast fashion and health and wellness. But because of you know what Chris touched on earlier and our ability to really build a program specifically for a client, it's it's there's so much opportunity outside of those typical you know verticals where they're highly competitive and there's a high chance for repeat purchase. Obviously, that type of brand is always a really good fit for loyalty because you know they're going to come back and shop with you again and you want to keep your brand top of mind. But I think um, we really are able to work with you know, to brands from totally different verticals and build a really solid program that's going to help them, um, you know, hit their business goals. So I think that's really interesting. And yeah, and so from the partner marketing side and just sort of the partner management side, um, we love to collaborate with our partners and build great content together. We are, you know, in addition, I mentioned that we're growing our integrations team. We're also growing our partner marketing team so we can do more of this. Um, you know, our, our partner management team. I'm new. We're, we're bringing someone else on board um, as well. We have Steve um, and we, you know, we want to be doing more of this, including blog swaps, you know, co-branded case studies, co-branded sales collateral and product sheets, webinars, you know, you name it. We want to be, we're always open to new exciting opportunities as well. And we're definitely going to be reaching out to you guys more um, here in the, the coming weeks and months to kind of figure out how we can collaborate on, on content. And then, you know, we love sponsoring events and meetups and we're putting an emphasis around that as well. We want to be doing more of that in 2019. Um, you know, we just hosted an event, the Lakers game, which was awesome um, in LA. It was, a, it was a great event for us and our partners. So doing, getting creative and doing more things like that is something that we're definitely looking at. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me um, and we can chat about that uh, you know, in the future or just shoot a message in the chat or we'll put, we'll put some notes in our follow-up email as well around how to get in touch with us about that. Chris, yeah, anything to add there from the marketing side? Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I think just to add to that, as I said earlier, you know, again, this is a big continued focus where we're continuing to invest in the partner community. And that means, you know, more team members here at Annex Cloud, more events, more great content. That's where really, where, you know, we do a great job. Um, I think in terms of creating content that's really thought leadership driven, um, it's, we'll be definitely doing a lot more events. So we definitely are, you know, quite uh, invested in, and as I said, really have a focus on excellence in this area. So definitely please, you know, continue to bring those types of opportunities that, you know, how can we create, you know, win-win opportunities for us um, in both virtual and real world events and create some great content that, not only you know uh, educates but inspires um, all, all of our end user customers to take the actions we want them to take, i.e., buy more from us, right? Um, yeah. And so yeah, and uh, you know, and continue to draw, develop great relationships, right? Because we all know, even in the world of tech, it's still relationship driven, um, you know, and and it's still like the value of face to face is still tremendous. Um, and we just support that through, you know, um, digital and virtual um, channels. But still, it's all about trying to create great relationships all around. Um, and so hopefully all of you can see continuously. And those of you that have been a partner with us can see that, you know, that we do truly value the relationship. And, and those of you that are new, you will hopefully continue to see that, that you know, how much we value the relationship and, and our willingness to invest in it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think um, we'll move into maybe just some questions before we finish up here. And uh, let us just look and see about some questions. Oh, I appreciate we got a comment about Annex Cloud being a great list track partner. We love that. We're happy to hear that. We love our partners. Um, and, and a question came in about our event schedule for 2019. And I think that's a good one to kind of piggyback off how we ended that um, that last conversation around getting together with partners and how we're going to work together in 2019. So, you know, we're definitely sponsoring a lot of the big industry events. We'll be kicking off the year at NRF. We're doing shop talk, IRC, um, you know, probably Etail West, outdoor retailer. Um, and then, you know, specific partner related events like Unite and Imagine. Um, and, you know, we'd love to 
for the opportunity. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be sponsoring and attending a lot of those conferences as well. So we're thinking about sort of what side events we can host for our customers and you know our prospects. So let's definitely um, figure out if there's ways for us to, to co-sponsor stuff alongside those events. Um, and then another question. So in relation to the elements of value, how do you use loyalty to create affiliation and belonging? Chris, do you want to um, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's about uh, you know why do people want to affiliate or belong, right? You know why? You know, and, and, and you know, in, because in many cases people choose to affiliate or belong because something resonates with them, you know, emotionally, and that's obviously because they're going to get some some form of value out of it. And so I think that. You know, the the more that value can can be higher up in that pyramid, right? Um, the more likely somebody's going to choose to affiliate and belong and stay um, as a part of that. You know, if it's if it's just functional value, where okay, I get something. You know, I, I mean, you know, I'm going to be it's less sticky, right? But if I start to, um, you know, the more higher up in that 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 chain of elements of value, the more it's going to incentivize someone, um, I think, to to really um, stay affiliated. So it's both like, because what is it? It's both attracting people to, to actually become, you know, a, a member and then staying a member, right? So obviously, continuously, I think it, that's the other thing that a loyalty program continue to do is to not only incentivize somebody to first um, want to belong, but then, of course, uh, a loyalty program could then remind them of that value over and over, right? And even in between purchases, remind them of the value and remind them of why they should, you know, continue to be affiliated and belong, meaning, you know, stay connected to that brand um, and participate in, in activities with that brand. So, um, yeah. You know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and I think you can really use your loyalty program to build a bit of a community. We always like to talk about Sephora as a really great example of a loyalty program that that's just unbelievable, right? I mean, they have a they have a huge community that's built there, um, and people are really, uh, you know, they people like to post about when they've moved into a new tier at Sephora, and I think that's something that's really interesting. And then, you know, for one of our clients to mention. Um, you know, Olympus camera uses visual commerce to create a community platform on their website where fellow customers and photographers can share pictures and like and comment on each other's. They can ask questions um, and, you know, they can actually see what sort of lenses and cameras that photographer is using, which is obviously great for the brand. Um, but this, you know, is incentivized by that loyalty program. So I think there's a lot of really exciting things. That's one definitely worth taking a look at. I think they've been really creative around um, around this idea of sort of building that community and and getting you know creative around your loyalty program and and um, you know user generated content through the through the people that are actually using the cameras. So I think there's some interesting stuff there. Um, okay, and then another question. So, um, what customer touch points do you consider most important for an omni-channel loyalty program? Do you want? I, I, I guess I can start here, Chris, if you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I think you know, there's some pretty obvious ones right up front, right? Like online, you want to make sure that you cover um, key locations where customers are taking action. Um, I think you know, another one that's key is mobile. Um, whether or not you have an app, mobile is a you know mobile is a vital touch point, um, even for brands that are online only, and things like what we mentioned earlier with SMS, right? How can you get creative around a touch point with your customers? Um, and for brands that have brick and mortar stores, using a loyalty program, you, know, you need to make it as effortless, effort, excuse me, as effortless as possible. Um, meaning, you know, the accessibility to those rewards should be seamless, whether through email or phone. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things we touched on a little bit earlier, but is the fact that, you know, for Annex Cloud, we do integrate with all the POS systems. So you're really creating, you know, an aggregated place for all that data to come in. It's not like you have an online loyalty program that doesn't connect with what's going on in store. So really making sure that all of those aspects um, touch each other. Chris, other things to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you said it very well. I mean, I think it ultimately comes down to also, like, you know, again, for you as a brand, you know, knowing who your customers are and, you know, what are the touch points that kind of they tend to interact with you, 
and and then also which touch points you know you want to drive people to to a degree um you, you know again how do you incentivize people to take the actions that you want them to take um that means do you want them to you know go move from online to in store um you know and then how do you create that seamless experience across the you know mobile web and in store and make sure that the, you know the experience is the same across all of those channels that's obviously what omni channel is and you know so i think going back to annex cloud making making sure that you know we can deliver that experience um you know so that the customers if they get you know points for making a purchase online they can go into the store and redeem them right and it's seamlessly integrated yeah and i think things like the receipt aggregator that we touched on a little bit earlier too adds another sort of level of you know complexity in a good way to this and that you're thinking about where you know if you're joe's jeans and you're buying jeans at the physical brick and mortar joe's store versus at nordstrom versus you know, online through another third party seller, I think it's really interesting to be able to kind of aggregate that data and see where people are shopping. Um, and then, you know, like we said, you know, wherever they're buying your brand, at least to be able to market to them and, and allow them to see new products and things like that is really, really valuable. Right. And I think the other thing that maybe we didn't touch on too is just, so again, there's all of these like core touch points, right? Which is like the points for purchase, right? Web, mobile, and, but then there's also these other, uh, you know, and then points for purchase that you don't have control over, which is like we talked about with the receipt data aggregator, you know, that situation. But then also other touch points that are, you know, maybe higher up in the funnel, which are, you know, in social. So, you know, in Annex Cloud, so the social and behavioral component is, you know, are people sharing or commenting? Um, do we want to incentivize people in social to share, comment, um, and take those types of actions, recommend? Um, you know, so those touch points are also extremely valuable, right? Even, you know, on the product page, the touch point of, you know, what, what are people seeing in terms of uh, a rating or review and how do we incentivize that, um, you know, in terms of loyalty um, to take those actions, to make that final purchase or to add a rating or a review or to recommend a friend. Um, so there are many other touch points that are valuable that may not be as obvious. Um, as yeah. the traditional um, loyalty touch points. Yeah, and you know that your, you know, your most loyal members are your biggest advocates, right? And and really using referrals, I think, is so important, right? Getting those people that are that you know are coming back to you and using you consistently, and obviously like your brand to then refer you to their friends, and you know those people are going to be probably similar and like minded, and hopefully be good customers for you as well. And same with, you know, having them leave a review or, you know, posting Q&A and things like that. I think it's really important. Yeah, and I think that's it in terms of questions. Um, you know, for us, I think, and we, we can leave with some sort of ending messages, Chris, but we would love, you know, after this to hear any feedback from you guys on the webinar, the content, um, if this is content that's interesting to you guys, if you think, you know, we need to spend time diving more deeply into Annex Cloud as a product, or if you want to hear more best practice and, um, you know, like the content that Chris shared a little bit earlier in terms of marketing and 2019 and our, our predictions, um, we'd love to know from you guys sort of, you know, how you feel about this and, and what we can be doing, because we'll be doing more of this in 2019. Right, Chris? <laughs> Yes, we will. We will be doing a lot more events, both virtual and in person. Um, so there's definitely a, a robust schedule. We'll be at you know all of the the core events as well as many others in 2019. Um, we are also going to be creating and curating some of our own events, which we'd love to do with partners, as well as participating in partner events um, that they are putting on. Um, so absolutely, definitely, please do reach out to your partner manager about opportunities that you have, or, or uh, you know, creating uh, events with us because we definitely have a plan to do so. Um, so we'd definitely love to to you know make those things happen. And whether they're very small events, but you know, again, focus on creating some great content and creating some great situations to um, uh, dialogue face to face. Again, build relationships. Um, you know, that's what it's all about for us. So I want to thank all of you guys for uh, participating today and the terrific partners we do have. Um, look forward to doing some great things in 2019.
Yeah. And we'll send, like I said, we'll send the recording as a follow up and, you know, please feel free to reach out um, after that. If you have questions or you want to chat, um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and I'll, I'll put my uh, email address in the chat here just in case you don't have it. So thanks guys. Have a nice holiday and a great rest of your day. We'll give you, we'll give you 10 minutes back in your, in your, I'm sure busy schedule. Thanks everybody for attending and we'll look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye.